First off, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Mike Lesseter and his team uh, for for even coming up with this idea. It kind of takes, uh, well, to my mind, the the best of what's what we get out of the meetings when we get together as dealers. We I think we get more out of doing this sort of thing over beer at night. You know, after the the meat and potatoes of the meetings over with. So I, I appreciate your your vision to, to bring all that together in your team. You, you did a fantastic job. Also, I want to thank the, the sponsors that, that helped put this together. Um, I, uh, we all have Dave Kanicki stories, and uh, when Dave called me, I, I thought he was serving up a big softball for me, but there was something ominous when, uh, um, when Mike uh, talked about uh, uh, short lines in the dealership and how controversial that is. I thought, boy, no. What's so controversial about that? I, <laughs> unless there's some company people in the back that I don't know about, you know, that uh, I wish you'd let me know about that. But uh, I think um, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say probably most of the people in this room have already um, grappled with this, you know, and, and uh, have kind of uh, made their decisions. But there, there are some things that that, um, that work for us, and, and we're um, we're on the pro side. We, you know, we feel that it's it's important to have the, the short lines in the dealership, and I. I look to tell you why. Um, I'm also proud to say I'm here with my father, Dan Kunow, down here, and incidentally, he's also my top salesman. So, <laughs> uh, just uh, you know, a quick thing. Oh, yeah, we got pictures too. Um, uh, we're a two-store uh, dealership in Eastern Iowa. Um, I'm uh, I bought my father and uncle out two years ago, so now I'm uh, president and CEO. And um, we're, we're uh, Case IH um, um, since 1936. We're, we're New Holland since 1940. And we're proud to have uh, Kubota. We brought them on in 94. Uh, so we're 77 years old. I've been there for 24 of those years. And um, we think the multi-line strategy is an is a important uh, part of our success. Uh, early on, uh, and again, it gets back to, to culture. We um, and we've really embraced this philosophy for, for a long time. We, you know, there's always the the catchphrases or the buzzwords about uh, being a total solutions provider and, and things like that. And I, you know, I think a lot of that gets lip service, but but I think it takes a commitment to doing things that sometimes puts you outside your comfort zone. And and uh, in the early '60s, um, uh, Dad and Dick got into grinder mixers. It was it was something to, that allowed our, our livestock customers to. Um, really increase the productivity of, of their their herds, um, and then uh, of course the skid loaders. You know, in the in the in the mid '60s and, and early '70s with uh, the Oatana Mustang when that came on, uh, when we had uh, the traveling salesman that had a trailer behind his old Chrysler and he used to demonstrate in a three-piece suit and a and a cattle lot. So that was always pretty impressive. Um, No-till drills in the '80s. You know that uh, with the Great Plains products that that brought them on board. Uh, yield monitors. We've um, we've always been excited about the the precision uh, part of the business. Back in the early 90s, when the yield monitors were were coming on, uh, we had you know some of the off brands, and we also had the Ag Leader. You know that that's the basis for a lot of the the yield monitoring today, and and uh, kind of brought us to the party. Um, and then that that kind of evolved uh, kind of a natural progression into. Um, uh, us rolling out signal we were the first uh, dealer in our trade area you know we're a small dealer um, but we were the first dealer in our trade area to bring out an RTK tower network so that's that's been something that continues to pay dividends for us and then most recently we point to the the, the Drago cornhead the chopping cornhead technology that we brought to our market it really did a great job of opening up you know the the sheds to a lot of the, the competitive customers that we had because we could we could put it on any combine and we could make it about any color a guy would want. So um, that's kind of what brought us to where we are today here. <clears throat> so as far as um, as far as this or really any of the any of the topics we're talking about, it, it, it kind of boils down to being true to your vision for the company. You know, we need to be comfortable with the decisions we're making, and I think being comfortable also brings a commitment to to seeing. A uh, certain philosophy through in your store, um, y you know. Some some people just have a natural, um, um, I guess, a comfort comfort level with uh, more of the, what I call the commodity products. You know, the, the tractors and combines, something that they can get really at any any dealership. And there's 
you know, that's not a crime. It's just getting back to it's, it's really a personal, um, you know, decision for the, the management group of that company, you know, if they're really, really uh, dialing that in tightly. Um, but in my opinion, um, I feel that brand purity uh, really falls short of true market penetration, you know, if we're looking at, uh, if we're honestly looking at all the business in, the mar in our market, you know, right now the, the market share metrics that we're getting from our, our majors are, are obviously just focused on, on their products and I guess that's, that's not a crime per se, but you have to kind of put it into perspective and in how you're choosing to approach your market and, and serve the needs of that market and, um, you know, it doesn't take into effect really are into account all the business that's that's out there you know and you, and you read uh, you read today about you know wallet share you know and, and there's there's a finite amount of business out there and it's just a matter of you know what are you doing to capture that business and, and bring that in the door um, you know I, I think that's that's something that we've really focused on you know if we look at the the market share that we have across the whole spectrum of, of uh, brands and lines that we carry um, so the other thing is it, it can get it can get really complicated. You know, um, some questions you have to ask yourself. You know, do you have uh, a desire to um, you know put the resources and the effort and the time into managing um, relationships with with all these other vendors, um, tracking order writing programs and such? Um, it can get pretty complicated. <clears throat> Again, in my opinion, I, I believe that uh, the specialty manufacturer, the short line, uh, is really an engine of in, uh, innovation in the industry. We see uh, these little companies taking a lot more chances that we'll see out of the out of the major lines, um, and, and consequently, when we have these in our store, a lot of the emerging technologies that we have, we see uh, greater uh, margin opportunities with these lines, and um, it also has to do with your profile in your market. Your you're seen more as a progressive, cutting edge, um, and again, you know, as our customers are depending on us for um, uh, really being their iron guys. You know, they they come in and they they solicit our opinions. They know that we're doing our research and we're also finding, you know, what are the best products? You know, and how do these work? You know, what's the strength of the company? I mean, we're doing the due diligence so they don't have to, but we also are a resource to them to suggest uh, maybe a new direction that they hadn't considered before. <clears throat> um, some of these, you know, getting back to some of the technology, technologies we had before, you know, with the chopping corn heads and vertical tillage and, you know, precision chemical application. Uh, again, it's just an opportunity that we've, you know, really exploited to get, you know, increase the margins in the equipment. You know, I look at uh, the major manufacturers really as a finishing school for a lot of this technology. We see a lot of the innovation that comes, you know, through the, the short line or the, the specialty uh, folks and um, just uh, they kind of pick up where they leave off oftentimes. And sometimes the bloom's off by that point, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of technologies just kind of running their course. <clears throat> so I guess, you know, getting back to that, you know, the... Uh, you have to ask yourself as a dealership, do you want to, you know, really focus on the early adopters? Um, uh, do you have a, a capacity to, um, you know, deal with a heartburn of some of these emerging technologies? You know, some of them aren't quite ready for prime time. You got to kind of factor that into in your approach. Okay, developing the the concept of uh, market share versus wallet share here a little bit. Um, you know, we, we appreciate the, the, the idea of market share in our, our area of responsibility. Um, but, but again, the, the, um, we're still able to populate our market with, with the equipment that we represent. You know, so it's really, um, it's really serving the purpose of having that, you know, that share of market that way. Um, we're seeing a lot of our customers having a, a budgeted amount of, um, you know, dollars that they have, um, you know, for uh, machine expenditures, um, you know, through the year, um, you know, and one size does not fit all. We just have to see are we are we striving to meet the demands of these diverse segments. Um, one thing that we're seeing, and it looks like I'm going to run just a couple minutes long here, we're seeing that the um, 
the rules of maintaining market share is is to not abandon the market. You know, we're seeing some of the majors they kind of dip in and out of the markets that that we're engaged in, and and we prevent these as solutions. We're um, we're also saying that we're going to be there to back these solutions up. You know, moving forward. So um, I think it it's in our best interest to to support these, and sometimes it just requires that we're we're uh, we're working with the specialty manufacturers to have the continuity in these different segments that we choose to support. You know, without with ducking in and out like the majors do, sometimes that that really affects our credibility in our market and with our customers. Um, <clears throat> Especially products, again, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, especially products, it really gets us into that competitor's shed. You know, we're, we're under a lot of, um, I wouldn't say, well, we're under a lot of pressure today to, to find that conquest customer, as, as, you know, Case might say. And, and I think it's a little presumptuous on our part to just presume that we can go into these uh, competitive users' sheds and, and just say we're going to trade you out of your combine. Well, sometimes it's easier to sell them a new corn head or, or sell them a, a grain cart or something at first, and that give you a chance to prove yourself, prove the things that we can do for the deal, the customer, and then gradually move the relationship from there. The next thing is uh, penetration to diverse markets. Uh, we're, we're tractor people. We, li we love the iron, but there are a lot of other markets that uh, that can take advantage of our understanding of the, the industry and the equipment that we're selling um, you know we're, we're all faced with a diminishing pool of uh, growers and vying for their love and affection in our markets um, but we also have landscapers nurseries mines quarries government agencies you know a lot of these uh, users will use the equipment that we have to offer so uh, um, we're seeing that sometimes the the major manufacturers are unable to um, uh, have the flexibility to answer or solve the needs of these uh, these particular customers, but it it's going to you know reduce the dependence of our dealership on on strictly ag, but still keeps us in our wheelhouse the the farm equipment. Just uh, just in closing here, um, be true to the vision of your company that you had for your company. Uh, you have to be honest about your your ability or your desire to be on the, the bleeding edge of technology or if you're your comfort with your your comfort zone with your uh, more more um, traditional products brand diversity as a tool for market penetration uh, the complexity of managing multiple relationships and uh, basically what works for you that's what I have thank you